Thanks to my go-to book summary app, Shortform, for sponsoring this video. Hi, it's Simon. I got a great email from one of the regular Better Creating viewers recently with a simple but brilliant request. Make a video on the best new apps that can replace your native Apple apps on your iPad. And well, for that matter, that new iPhone 14 too. So I have, let's find some gems. We'll cover great apps for you to explore from note-taking and Apple Pencil Joy, web browsing and consuming media, email functions, planning and productivity, as well as some quick fire creative apps that really make the most of that overtly powerful chip that's probably now inside your device. Now the aim here is not to do a detailed review of every single app because we would be here a long time, but rather to give you my top recommendations for some apps that I think make great native iOS app replacements for you to try yourself. I've listed all of them mentioned below. Let's go. Nice rhyme. Sign Mon. Okay. Now, first up, if you own an iPad, it's pretty likely you're going to be taking notes on it, whether that's with your keys or first off with the Apple Pencil. Now, that might be for your weekly grocery list or a full-on project plan or study note session. So let's first of all talk handwriting and note taking. Apple Notes is the native one. I'm gonna set this thing where we get rid of the Apple one and replace it. But on this category, it's worth saying that I actually think Apple Notes is one of the best native offerings for the iPad. And it's hard to say no to the smooth integration and ease of use it offers across your Apple ecosystem, particularly that home screen tap with the Apple Pencil to start a new note, pretty cool. But for even greater functionality with the Apple Pencil, the first stop has to be GoodNotes 5. It's been and remains my Apple Pencil note-taking app of choice with a great range of designs, a range of organizational and folder features and accessible drawing and editing tools. This is brilliant for anything from journaling to project planning and even annotating documents. I use it to storyboard the theater productions that I direct. If you wanna go further, into the world of art and sketching, Procreate is an absolutely brilliant app. And to be honest, everyone should download it to realize the power of the iPad. It's basically a complete art studio. You can even use it as your journal if you want to. And it's used by professional artists and everyday users alike. Now, if you wanna get advanced with a more vector-based graphic sketching and creation system, try Graphic. It's a powerful and affordable power app to make great designs come to life in iOS. Pretty cool. If you want to get a bit freer and you want to really see the power of swipeable and movable pages, Muse is a spatial canvas for research notes, reading, sketching and so on. What is cool is it doesn't constrain how you work or how you organise your work. This is one you should go to the website for to really learn the functionality and unlock the potential in it. Now, when it comes to word processing, notes and typing, Apple's offerings are pages or notes. Now, for more casual and personal writing, why not try drafts? Drafts, drafts, my mum's from Leeds. It's a great iPad focused, minimal workspace for just focusing on the task of writing. The widget system as well really adds value. And I love it for, well, just drafting videos and simple bits of writing. So if you are someone who writes regularly, this is worth a download. In another direction, I'm becoming a big fan of using Google Drive and Google Docs on the iPad. Don't knock it, it's a great way to manage important documents wherever you are. And if you have consistent internet access, I still think this is a great free solution for managing the classics of word processing and document storage. And it means that you don't clog up your iPad with the data. If you really want to push your word processing further though, this one's right out of left field. It's an amazing option for a writing app called Jarvis, the AI writing tool. And okay, this isn't technically an iPad app yet, it's web-based, but Jarvis is just worth a check. You can essentially brief Jarvis to write copy on a subject for your prompts and directions. And once you give good references, it's surprising how useful and time-saving it can be to help develop quite cool copy. If posting regular content, this could be a great way to shortcut some of the simpler tasks and then clean it up yourself afterwards. Check it out and let me know in the comments below if it's worth it or not. Okay, so that's writing, but I think the iPad is the perfect reading and research tool. So let's talk reading, listening, and generally consuming media. For web browsing, the native browser on the iPad and iPhone is of course Safari, and it's fine. Of course, we could jump straight to Google Chrome. Don't get angry people if you're against Google Chrome, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna suggest a brilliant iPadOS and iOS focused browser called Command Browser. 
Why? Well, it's got some seriously useful extra features that supercharge how you make sense of the web. Most notably, the built-in ability to highlight, bookmark and web clip what you find into journals and collections for later. My personal favorite feature with this though is that it integrates with Readwise and that means all the clippings I take in the command browser can be automatically synced into Notion where I keep my personal second brain and gather stuff I want to look at later. On that note, check out my second brain video on the apps and tools I use to do just that after this. In fact, for the regulars here, most of these next apps can have integrations with Readwise to link to your Notion or equivalent knowledge hub. And while we're talking about great apps for the iPad, make sure to go check out my Notion second brain templates for a complete life organization system. I mean, I've got to keep the channel running somehow. Time for some downtime, maybe catch up on the news. Ah, but hang on, we're replacing native apps, news included. I recommend checking out Flipboard. It's a great looking free app for gathering and browsing news and trending topics into Flipboard presentations. What's particularly cool is that you can flip by topic and category to view the stuff you want to. And the widget functions take this pleasingly further where you can create views by topic. Rather than it just being a general news app, you can properly customize Flipboard to your personal interests. The iPad is made for online reading and a read later app is an essential part of any productivity system in my opinion. But for this, you have to try Instapaper. Instapaper is a beautiful and simple iPad focused reader that you can personalize to a visual format you like best whilst it removes all the ads and annoying stuff at the same time from document. Fantastic. Oh, and this is another Readwise friendly app for integrating into your wider system if you're one of those second brain power users. Now, whilst Apple Books is good, if you're a serious reader, it's a no brainer to add the Kindle app to your collection so you can sync your books and highlights across your Kindle and wider system. And if you're someone who enjoys noting down that perfect inspirational quote or life hack from your favorite podcast, ditch the Apple podcast app and grab air.io instead. It allows you to capture quotes with a triple click click on your headphones or use the air quote button to do the same and has a collection of transcripts that you can quote from so you can access it later. Now there is one more app in this category I think you should know about and it actually doesn't have a native app equivalent. In fact, I think it's so good I've partnered with them. Today's sponsor is Shortform. Simply put, Shortform is the world's best non-fiction book summary service and it is surprising how valuable it becomes once you use it. The app is not intended, that said, for replacing reading books either. But I've loved using it to read a condensed view of the book so that I have a clearer overview before I read it in full. I've also found short form to be a great way to recap the key ideas from one I read a while ago. I use it all the time on the channel to refine key ideas and references for videos. A great example is this summary of Cal Newport's digital minimalism that I used on the last video for tips on how to reduce distractions in your life and be more intentional about how you use your devices. Pretty appropriate as a counter to this video. So if you love your apps, this is an essential Essential read to keep some balance and control on your screen time. There's always a one pager covering the main ideas as a whole, then chapter by chapter summaries in detail, and they also build on those ideas with interactive reflections and exercises to engage deeper. Plus, if the author is saying something bold and extreme in one direction, they will also offer short form notes that suggest an alternative viewpoint or different perspectives that you can then consider, so you aren't just reading in a bubble. So if you're like me and want to deepen your understanding in subjects like self-improvement, productivity, tech, entrepreneurship, give Shortform a try through my special link, shortform.com forward slash better creating for a five day unlimited access plus 20% off the annual subscription when you join. So that's basically two and a half months free. New books and articles are published every week. And as a subscriber, you'll get to vote on the books that are covered. Now, let's move on to work and productivity. We have to start where most of us really could do with saving some time from a good app, and that's email. Okay, Apple's native mail app is fine, but it isn't for everyone. There are a ton of options out there, but for me, the best option has to be Spark Mail. It's low priced, reliable, and has some great features that truly make processing and organizing your inbox and your emails super easy. You can, however, go even further and pay up to $30 for premium options. The top of the pile, it has to be Superhuman. So if you can link Superhuman and the price of it to your business and your income and justify it like that, then it's got to be a great bet, but it isn't for everyone. All of that said, if you've got the money, it can massively cut down your email processing time with automated processes and pre-templated responses that just make it fast. 
<laughs> As a quick productivity tip though, try Tiago Forte's approach of the one touch to inbox zero. The idea being that you set up a system that means that every email only touches your inbox once. So if it requires a calendar event, it goes into the calendar and is archived. If it requires an action, it goes into your task manager and is archived. If the email has info you need to reference in it, it goes into your note-taking app. And if it's an article you want to read, it goes into that Read Later app, Instapaper. Remember, check out Tiago Forte's blog for more. When it comes to file management, that would be the Files app. Well, even though I'm an Apple fanboy, I believe the place to go here is Google Drive. It's accessible across my browsers. I also know everything is there and won't be lost if I lose my Mac or iPad. It's not a bad idea to use a cloud service like this and let it be your main file manager. If you are predominantly online as a user, it's pretty much always connected to the internet. Okay, it's the big one, tasks and to-do lists. And this is really replacing reminders. I suppose. Todoist would be my first choice for a pure to-do list app. The interface is excellent with easy ways to schedule and group tasks together with far more additional functionality than the Reminders app. The best features include the intuitive text input function where typed or dictated sentences are turned into specific calendar or to-do list entries. And with the API, there are even options to integrate the app with other services like feeding tasks into your calendar of choice such as Google Cal or Fantastic Cal or integrating with other productivity tools directly like Evernote or indirectly via automation services like Zapier. But if you are new here, honestly, my favorite app is still Notion, that all-in-one productivity workspace I've used to build a complete life operating system in. I do most of my planning, managing, and note-taking in it, so make sure to go and check out my various video guides and complete life organization templates if you're interested in building a custom productivity app system for making your life that little bit easier day to day. So managing your calendar, iCal is a solid option, but I think we can do better. If you are in the Google ecosystem, like I am, the Google Cal app is a great replacement to iCal, and it's easily one that you can forget as an option for an iPad or iPhone app. It has the added bonus of a great looking and useful widget integration, and the mobile design is great. If you are a desktop user as well, it's a nice option for more advanced meeting management and sharing meetings and notes with others. That said, Fantastical 3 is the obvious premium option for me here. It really is well built and works well on Apple devices. It costs just under $40 a year. However, you get some great features. It's particularly good to use with Todoist if you use that for your to-do lists, allowing you to see them all in one place. And it integrates with various calendar platforms, including Google Calendar. If you wanna push things further into the world of AI, check out Motion, an app that actually schedules your day for you. One of their ads actually said to me once, to-do lists are dead, you no longer have to plan your day. Scary. Now this is more of a combined task manager and calendar. You set your working hours, sync your existing schedule, and then add tasks you want to get done, and it works stuff out for you. Worth giving a go. I mean, it costs a bit, around $19 a month based on its daily cost. Let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, time to get creative with the iPad. Let's do a quick fire run through of those native creative apps. If you are recording audio or maybe even a podcast on your iOS device, try replacing GarageBand with Ferrite Pro. Okay, it's not the most beautiful app, but man, is it super powerful. You can properly record serious audio for your podcast or wherever else you are sonically developing. If you wanna do more with your video capture, get hold of Filmic Pro and start making use of those sexy new cameras on the iPhone 14 in a different way. You can shoot 4K log footage in it. It basically means that you can add serious mirrorless camera functionality. It even has a remote so you can use one device to trigger the other. I used it for videos all the time. And if you're starting to edit video casually on your iPad with iMovie, you should give LumaFusion some serious consideration. It's not Final Cut Pro, but it's close and even integrates with it. For a one-off fee, it's been well worth given that I edited the first year of this channel on it. Now, if you're editing photos on your Photos app, you definitely should invest in Lightroom or maybe Affinity Photo or Pixelmator Pro. They are seriously powerful editing suites that compete with some of the best Mac-based products out there to make your photos really pop. And with Pixelmator Pro providing further natural drawing and touch-up tools for the Apple Pencil that are really super powerful. Next up, you can discover more great ways to transform how you use your iPad for a more productive and creative workflow 
on this video next. It would be great if you subscribed, autumn if you hit that thumb button, and make sure to let me know your favourite app alternatives that I've missed in the comments below. See you on the next one. Bye.